Sunday? But I think it works. Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to be demonstrating um, what I believe is the first ever protocol to handle more than 10 agents. Um, so there, there's a very big problem with um, orchestrating multiple agents because agents can only really do one thing at a time. So as soon as you try to have more than one agent, communication becomes a problem because agents only have one thread. They can only do one thing at a time. And so like basically like you're trying to send a request to another agent and like it, it, it can take a lot of time and it's just the whole way of orchestrating multi-agent workflows is just not asynchronous at the moment. And so, yeah, basically like agent-to-agent -agent communication is very time consuming because you have to wait for each agent to, co to continue. Um, you have to wait for each agent to basically finish what they're saying. And so there's no as asynchrony and it's basically not scalable for more than three agents. So um, what we built is essentially like, we're calling it the swarm communication protocol. Um, it allows you to have many, many different agents that can communicate together um, kind of like through like an internet of agents, which we're using RAG as a, a, a kind of like a communication layer. Um, and so like all these agents can now like see each other's thoughts and um, see what everybody else is doing. It's kind of also like a Twitter. So like all these agents can post something to the RAG system and then they can all uh, query each other's thoughts and see what they're working on. Um, and so that basically allows very, very scalable uh, communication between many, many agents. Um, you can have hundreds of agents, or even pretty soon thousands of agents that can all work together as a team. And so now like each agent can essentially be asynchronous, and um, now all the different agents can talk to each other. It's also very scalable, and you also have infinite context windows. Um, and so yeah, we're essentially using ChromeDB. Um, each agent fetches the history of the swarm by creating ChromeDB. Now each agent has full contacts over the entire swarm and all their histories. And we're going to run it on um, we're going to run it on an uh, SEC Nvidia filing, analyzing like potential ways Nvidia can cut expenditures. Um, so this is what the code looks like. Um, it's the, the prompt is pretty big, but here are the different agents. We have around ten different agents. Um, we just specify their name, a, a ba very basic system prompts, um, an LLM loops, and some other settings. And then uh, we're going to try running this. And um, yeah, so basically like this is the architecture of the swarm. Uh, this was a paper that just came out by uh, um, Together AI. Basically, we have the prompt, which is uh, what are ways to minimize the video's expenditure. This is gonna be sent to all the agents. Um, then we're gonna summarize them, and then we're gonna have another layer and another layer, depending on how many layers we chose. And so um, if we go back to the swarm, uh, we're basically going to start seeing all the agents working together. Here, the first thing that happens is we're taking uh, a document base and we're just adding all those to the database. And um, the first agent says, uh, let's see, let's see, to analyze NVIDIA's financial data and locate unnecessary expenditures, the accounts will need to review the detailed financial statements uh, provided, including the income statements, balance sheets, cash flow statements. You'll need to uh, compare expenses across different periods, identify any significant discrepancies. And then you have another agent, the second agent says, uh, it's the balance sheet agent. And it says, basic earnings per share is calculated by dividing the net income by the weighted average number of shares outstanding, which is 2,462 for the three months ended uh, April 28, uh, 2024, and 2,470. Um, I think those are millions. Um, and so diluted earnings, oh. okay, there was an error, um, but that was, Oh no, that was a long time ago. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. So the balance uh, sheet analyzer said um, to look at unnecessary expenditures in, they would need to analyze for their uh, expenses. And if we keep going down, um, we see the uh, we see the next agent essentially trying to calculate the gross profit margin. And so that's $20 uh, billion dollars gross profit. It's essentially calculating like gross profit in a bunch of like accounting financial metrics. Um, and so the income statement analyzer agent says uh, it provided a full comprehensive analysis and um, 
yeah, basically we can keep going. Down. There's also a cash flow analyzer, uh, which basically says um, it analyzes uh, key financial ratios such as profit margin um, and return on assets. Uh, it's still very early. I, I, I built this kind of quickly, but um, uh, once we clean it up and make it useful, um, this will be very useful if you want to have like 10, 20, 30 agents all working on trying to automate some very complicated problem. And um, it's completely open source and you can check it out there. I've got a question here. When it comes back to the results, how do you know if it's true? How do you know if it's true? Um, there's a couple ways. Uh, for an accountant, it's very easy because you can use a calculator and you can calculate, um, like you can take into account, like you can have an agent put in $20 billion and then subtract that by the uh, the uh, net expenditures. So that for like this, uh, accounting is very easy. Uh, for something like, let's say like creative storytelling or like something that's not very too uh, mathematical, it'd be very hard to evaluate, but this is accounting and it's kind of easy to evaluate. So you could just have like function calls um, for tools that essentially say like, uh, this is a net income uh, tool and then you can have the agents plug in. How do you determine that you have an agent swarm problem uh, versus like a prompt or other types of problems. Like because I feel like this can accentuate problems if you're just really bad at prompting, uh, or if you're trying to solve certain problems that maybe don't need a swarm. Uh, so what criteria do you use to kind of gauge that this is a solution for uh, my team or whatever company? That's a very very good question. Um, it's like we literally made a whole like list of multi-agent papers and so basically anytime you want to have like any anytime you want to automate some very complicated activity like let's say I want you to um, send sales emails or I want you to like create marketing content like anything any activity now that would take one human would take more than at least three agents to do um, at the bare minimum so like any real world activity typically requires at least three to five agents um, now, like if you say like, you know, create a, a content for me, create a blog for me, like most agents would not be able to create like at least a thousand words of a good blog. You would still need a team. Um, so my response is in, in short, I would advise just trying multiple agents instead of one, uh, because there have been papers like more agents is all you need that like proves that you can basically, the more agents you add, the better performance you're going to get. And so it just goes like this. One last question. Hey, can you talk about um, the Asian technology market and where you see it going in the uh, next five years, especially I'm interested because I sold uh, an Asian technology company in 2002. So, oh, I see. That was funded by the Department of Defense, but so I'm interested in That's cool. <laughs> I, I want to learn more. Um, so, I, I definitely think, um, well, the way we're headed in five to ten years, I think there will be at least 50 agents in every major Fortune 1000 company. Um, and that might, that might even be more for startups because startups are ca uh, cash rich constrained and they need to get a lot of things done very quickly. So I think agents uh, in the next five years are gonna be in every single business that we could even imagine um, because there's just so many things to do digitally. Like if you like say you wanna send an email, you have to type and then you have to like, there's just so many tasks that need to be automated and I think agents are going to start just automating more and more and more and more of them. So, so do you think there's a subfield coming uh, into the industry that would verify the work of agents? What was that? Something that could verify the work of agents. Something that could verify the work of agents? Yeah. Um, I mean, agents are already out from, like agents now are already matching human performance in basically medicine, mathematical reasoning, science, um, sales, marketing. I mean, like agents are already matching human performance. And there was just a paper, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? A mixture of agents just came out yesterday and let's see, um, it already achieved state-of-the-art performance on Alpaca Eval 2 and my team bench flask surpassing GPT-4 Omni. Um, and so a team of agents, one agent is already matching the performance of one human. Having a team of agents definitively outperforms humans um, in most things, so. Yeah, for example, recently I reviewed a thesis of a student who was able to write papers using agents. 
but he, the papers that we published, how do we verify it? Like we, 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 did, we did a roadblock there, so. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Now there's, a, if you want like a very empirical way to evaluate how good the paper is, you could use citations. Um, you know, if it was even published to begin with. But you could also, I mean, like, that's a very hard question because it's multi-dimensional. Yeah. You, uh, you could validate the mathematical, like the math behind the paper. You could also, like, validate, like, like, you could have, like, a peer-reviewed process and see if there's any, like, logical, like, is it hallucinating reality? Um, and things like that. But, yeah, that's a very complicated problem. So maybe, like, evaluating a genetic performance would be a big business. So yeah, that, that that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh, so next up, <laughs> next up we have closing methods by such and such.